this is uh, my fourth lecture uh, on uh, selecting a best uh, uh, regression model uh, and uh, this one is basically you know continuation of the previous class uh, in the last class we we, we talked about uh, backward uh, elimination and uh, today we are going to uh, talk about uh, uh, forward selection and uh, stepwise uh, selection. Okay, so first uh, I'll talk about uh, forward selection. So the basic uh, motivation behind the uh, forward uh, selection is that you know we we start with uh, uh, no regressor in the model, and then every step we uh, add the most uh, relevant uh, regressor to the model. So, every step we, we keep on adding uh, one regressor to the model and there is some uh, stopping criteria. So, we will talk about those things now. Well, so the first uh, step is you, know, you start with uh, no regressor. in the model and then step 2 uh, all possible models with one regressor. with one regressor are considered and if statistic for each regressor is computed. Okay. Well, so if there are uh, k minus one regressor in the model, you have to compute k minus one uh, f statistic, and the regressor having highest. having highest uh, f statistic value is uh, added to the model. Is added to the model provided if the the value the highest f statistic value is greater than uh, f alpha 1 n minus k. So, this is basically you know residual degree of freedom. Sometime uh, in the last class I told you know uh, I told that this is error degree of freedom. So, error degree of freedom and uh, and uh, residual degree of freedom uh, the same ok. Well, I will I'll illustrate uh, using some example uh, later on. Let me just write down the algorithm first and then step 3. partial F statistic are computed for all of the remaining regressors. in the presence of in the presence of 
previously selected regressors. And uh, the one yielding the highest F F is added to the model provided or if of course, if F is greater than the <coughs> tabulated F, F value that means, F alpha 1 n minus k. Uh, I, I should not say n minus k, maybe I should write you know uh, 1 residual degree of freedom, degree of freedom. Here it might be ok, uh, no here also I should write uh, residual, residual degree of freedom ok. Well, uh, and the and uh, f the stopping criteria is that the step four the forward selection terminates. when the highest partial F statistic at a particular stage does not exceed f i n. So, f i n means I mean the tabulated value of f. So, basically this one is uh, f alpha 1 and the residual degree of freedom or when the last candidate regressors is added to the model. Okay, so, uh, this is the algorithm and uh, now what I want to do is that I want to illustrate this algorithm using one example. Uh, let me just give uh, the overview of this one. Uh, initially, we are starting with no regressor in the model and then all possible model with one regressor <coughs> sorry with one regressor are considered uh, that means uh, suppose uh, my problem has uh, four regressors say x1 x2 x3 x4 and one response variable y right so what i'll do is that i'll uh, in the first step, I uh, will consider the f statistic value for the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon y equal to beta naught plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon y equal to beta naught plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon y equal to beta naught plus beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon. So, these are the uh, regressor model or regression model with uh, involving one regressor variable. So, I will compute the F statistic for each of this model, model and uh, the model or the regressor having the highest F 
highest having highest if, if means uh, the associated if say f1 f1 is associated with this model this is f2 f3 f4 so f1 is highest means the associated random associated regressor x1 is significant to explain the variability this is the most significant among the four regressors to explain the variability in y and uh, once you select you know uh, suppose x1 is selected and then the next step is th is that you know uh, keeping x1 in the model say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 is there in the model now we uh, seek for the next best uh, regressor in the model so we will try with the, with the model like beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus epsilon and we will try with the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 see x1 is fixed and then beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon and y equal to beta 2 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon. So, we will compare in the presence of x 1 we will see which one is the best whether x 2 is based in the presence of x 1 or x 3 is based in the presence of x 1 or x 4 is based in the presence of x 1. So, I mean depending on that I mean that that can be uh, evaluated by computing the partial a value and the highest partial a value the model which is having the highest partial a value will be uh, the associated and uh, associated regressor will be included in the model. So, this is the uh, and we keep on doing this thing and there is some stopping criteria this says the stopping criteria ok. So, it says that you know forward selection terminates when the highest partial f statistic at a particular stage does not exceed uh, the threshold value ok. That means, uh, once you have if see if the partial f value here is not greater than the threshold value that means, uh, x 1 is enough for the model uh, you do not need to include uh, any other regressor in the model. So, we will stop there I mean uh, the final model will be this one. Well, uh, let me explain I mean, in detail the algorithm. So, this is the outline of uh, the algorithm. Now, uh, I will be considering the uh, halt uh, cement data again. So, you know it has the four regressors and uh, one response variable y. Well, now I will illustrate the forward uh, selection technique. Uh, using the halt cement data. Well, so what I do is that uh, initially there is no regressor in the model. Okay, and then I'll compute see uh, for this data there are four regressors x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4 right. Now, I will compute f value for the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon the f value associated with this model I uh, will call it f 1 using the previous notation. I will say f 1 nothing that means, uh, the uh, this is the uh, f statistics, but uh, in terms of the partial f value I will this is this the meaning of this one you know this is the partial f value for the regressor x 1 in the presence of no other regressor in the model that is why this dashed ok. We compute this value. Uh, similarly, consider the second uh, simple linear regression model that is beta y equal to beta naught plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. The associated f value is f 2 in the presence of nothing. Okay. So, we will evaluate this model also y equal to beta naught 
plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon. So, f 3 in the presence of nothing and y equal to beta naught plus beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon. So, I will compute f 4 in the presence of nothing. Well, so how to how to get uh, this value? You know, you just uh, uh, I have this uh, ANOVA table for this model. See, this is the fitted equation for the hauled cement data. You know, the same thing. You compute once you have the fitted value. You compute the uh, SS residual. You know, SST. This is the SST, and then you have the SS regression value. SS regression, SS residual and then you have the F statistic. Okay. So, this is how you, you have to find the F statistic value for this model and uh, in the forward selection uh, algorithm, uh, we denote this F by F 1 in the presence of, we call it a partial F. Okay. So, this is basically the you know, global F but uh, we call it f1 in the presence of no other regressor in the model. So, f1 value is 12.6. Okay, so, it is uh, 12.6. Similarly, you fit this model, you will get the value is equal to 21.96. This value is equal to 4.40 and this value is equal to 22.8. Okay. Now, of course, the highest highest f value is f 4 which is equal to 22.8. Okay, so, f 4 is, so x 4 is most significant uh, to explain the variability in y. So, x 4 and this, uh, this value is also, you know, this is greater than f, you compute f 0, 5, 1 and the residual degree of freedom here, you have only 1, 2 unknown in the model. So, 13 minus 2 that is 11. So, this is the residual degree of freedom and this one has value 4.84. So, that observed value is, is greater than the tabulated value. So, so x 4 is, is added to the model. Now, the next thing is that uh, we compute the partial F statistic for all of the remaining regressor in the presence of x 1. So, we compute the partial F, F for all of the remaining regressors. Uh, remaining regressors means, uh, see x, x 4 is already in the model. So, uh, in the presence of x 4. So, x 4 is already in the model. So, what we do is that we will compute f 1 in the presence of x 4 will compute the partial f statistic associated with x 2 that is f 2 in the presence of x 4 in the model and also we compute f 3 in the presence of x 4 in the model. Well, I, uh, I hope that you know how to, how to compute uh, this value. For example, say uh, say f 1 given 4, that means 
you have to consider the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon. You feed this model and then assess regression for the full model that is 1 4 that means x 1 x 4 minus SS regression x 4 by MS residual for the full full model means you know 1 and 4. Well, so this can be uh, this you can check that this value is equal to 2641 minus 1831.9 by 7.5 and this is going to be 108.22 and similarly you can check that f2 in the presence of x4 in the model is equal to 0 0.17 and f3 in the presence of 4 x4 in the model is equal to 40.29. So, that means, uh, okay, so if the highest uh, if statistic value is equal to uh, 108. So, the highest partial if value is f 1 in the presence of 4. Um, which is equal to 108.22. And you know, uh, now you check the tabulated value f 0 0.051 and the residual degree of freedom here. Now, you have uh, 3 unknown in the model. So, 13 minus 3 that is 10 that is the residual degree of freedom and this one is equal to uh, this value is equal to 4.96 and of course, this one is larger than, than 4.96. So, in the presence of 4, so the meaning of this one see f 1 4 f value is 108.22 which is uh, larger than the tabulated value. That means, uh, in the presence of see first we added x 4 in the model. Now, in the presence of x 4 1 is significant. So, next we will add. So, x 1 is now added to the model. Now, my model you know uh, it uh, it consists of two we have selected two random two reg regressors. Uh, so, y now is function of x 1 and x 4. Now, what we do is that you know see x 1 and x 4 have been added or selected. Now, in the presence of x 1, x 4 we will see whether x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1, x 4 or whether x 3 is significant in the presence of x 1 and x 4 in the model. So, if none of them are significant, then we stop here. Okay? So, this is what we have to do now. Uh, we will check uh, uh, you know uh, we will check this partial two partial f statistic value. What we do is that we will check the significance of x 2 in the presence of x 1 and x 4 in the model. So, we will compute this value and also we will compute f 3 the significance of x 3 in the presence of x 1 in the presence of x 1 and x 4 in the model. So, we will compute these two value. Uh, you know how to compute uh, you know uh, I do not want to repeat again. 
you can check that this this value uh, this value is equal to 5.03 and this value is equal to 4.24 okay still may, maybe just uh, I'll, I'll write down this one see this is equal to ss regression for the full model that is x1 x2 x4 minus ss regression for the model involving x1 and x4 by ms residual for the model involving x1 x2 x4 okay so this one you can check this 2667.79 minus 2641 by 5.33 and this is equal to 5.03. So, the highest uh, partial F value is this one. Now, whether this will be included, so whether next x2 will be included in the model that depends on the tabulated value of F or the threshold value. So, the highest partial F value is f2 in the presence of x1 and x4 in the model which is equal to 5.03 now what is the tabulated value f.051 and the residual degree of freedom so i'm talking about uh, three three regressors in the model full model okay uh, for computing ms residual so there will be four unknown that means the degree of freedom is 10 minus 4 that is equal to 9 9 so this value is 5.12 see now this one is not greater than the tabulated value so we can't uh, include x2 in the model at this moment we have we we have you no know, x1 and x4 in the model and in the presence of x1 x1 and x4 in the model uh, if x2 has the highest uh, partial f value but that value is less than the tabulated value so that that means the x2 is not significant is is not significant in the presence of x1 and x4 in the mod model so we can't include or add x2 in the model okay so we have to we have to stop here so this is the stopping criteria right uh, well so the forward selection forward selection algorithm terminates here and yields the model the output of the forward uh, selection uh, algorithm is y equal to 103 plus 1.44 so i am giving the fitted uh, uh, model basically what i want to see uh, say by this one is uh, i want to say that the final model uh, involve x1 and x4 uh, yeah final final, final uh, model uh, involve or yeah involve x1 and x4 well so this is the output of uh, forward selection and uh, next uh, we we move for uh, stepwise uh, selection right Uh, 
step wise uh, selection is it is a uh, basically you know combination of uh, forward selection and the backward elimination. Here uh, also we start with, uh, with the no regressor in the model and uh, okay, let me uh, explain the model you know this is very similar to the forward selection model. Uh, what I will do is that I just uh, revise this forward selection model. Uh, now, I am talking about uh, say step wise selection, okay. step wise selection. I will modify this algorithm. Here also we start with no regressor in the model and then all possible models with one regressors are considered and the f statistic value is computed and the regressor having the highest f statistic value is added to the model. Okay, so, there is no for stepwise selection there is no uh, condition I mean we, you do not need to check the tabulated value of f for the first regressor in the model. Okay. So, you do not need to check this condition. Okay. So, the highest uh, f statistic value is added to the model. So, if you can recall in you know, last example x 4 has the uh, highest uh, f statistic value and uh, that uh, had been included in the model. Now, the next step is the partial f statistics are computed for all of the remaining regressors in the presence of the previously selected regressor. That means, uh, let me recall the previous example x 4 was included first and then you compute the partial f statistic for x 1 in the presence of x 2, partial f statistics for x 2 in the presence of x 1 and x 3 in the presence of x 4 right. And the 1 yielding the highest f is added to the model if, if the f is greater than the tablet value. Here, uh, you know, in maybe sometime instead of this tabulated value, we can also consider a specified threshold value. Okay, so, this uh, value might be say for example, 5. Okay, so, instead of finding the tabulated value every time, we, we specify some threshold value here. If the observed f is greater than the spec specified threshold value, then we add the uh, corresponding regressor variable in the model. Well, so the first two steps are same. Now, uh, in step four, we have a change here. In step four, what we do is that uh, we check for a possible exit. Okay. What we do is that all variables in the model are evaluated with with partial F test to see if each one is 
still significant. And at this step, any regressor that is no longer significant is dropped from the model. Well, uh, I do not know whether it is clear to you, but uh, let me just recall the previous example. So, in the first step, we included x 4, the regressor x 4 in the uh, in the previous example and then in the second step, uh, we included x 1. Okay. So, here it says that uh, once you have this model say y equal to beta naught plus first in, uh, inclusion was beta 4 x 4 and then we added beta 1 x 1 in the model. So, it says that see beta 4 was or x 4 was significant alone. Okay. Uh, when we considered one regressor model. Now, x 1 is significant in the presence of x 4 that is why in the second step uh, x 1 has been included in the model. Now, the pro question is you know see of course, the x 1 is the last uh, added uh, regressor in this model. So, x 1 is of course, significant in the presence of x 4. Now, we need to check whether x 4 is significant in the presence of x 1. So, this is the difference if, if it might be the case you know x 4 was significant alone. So, at the first step, but at this moment in the presence of x 1 x 4 might not be significant. So, in so, so we need to we need to that is why it says that you know all variable in the models are evaluated with partial F test so, to see if any if each one is still significant. So, and uh, at this step any regressor that is no longer significant is dropped from the model. So, in the presence of x 1 if x 4 is not significant then we will drop x 4 from the model. So, this is the difference. So, this is called you know we, we check for the possible exit uh, at step 4 and the next step is the stopping criteria. Step 5 it says that the step wise selection terminates. when no other regressor yields a partial f greater than the threshold value and all regressors in the model in the model remains significant. So, the first uh, uh, so this includes two condition if there is no other regressor uh, which has significant partial f value in the presence of uh, the regressors in the model, uh, then we cannot include any more regressor in the model. And at the same time, the uh, regressors which are present in the model, they if they, they remain significant, then you do not need to uh, remove uh, one some regressor from the uh, model also. So, then we uh, I mean then the 
uh, stepwise selection algorithm terminates. Well, uh, I want to uh, I want to explain or illustrate this stepwise uh, selection criteria uh, algorithm using the uh, uh, Hall cement data again. Uh, okay, so here we have a table. Okay, so we'll be considering the the Hall cement data. So, the same uh, technique you know first uh, uh, you know no regressor in the model. Okay. Now, let me introduce one table, I have one table, uh, this is from the Draper and Smith book page number 337. So, let me explain uh, uh, the significance of these values. It says that the partial f values for variable x 1. So, this 12.6 is the f value for the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon and there is no other regressor already present in the in the model. So, uh, x 1 is the only regressor in the model. So, uh, this one is basically you know what we use the notation f 1 in the presence of nothing and this one is f 2 in the presence of nothing, f 3 in the presence of nothing, f 4 in the presence of nothing. So, uh, if you can recall this value to 22.8. Okay. Now, the meaning of this value is this one is basically f 2 in the presence of x 1 in the model. So, this, uh, this is the partial f statistics value associated with x 2 in the presence of x 1 in the model. Let me consider this value. So, this f value is the partial f statistics value associated with x 4 in the presence of x 3 in the model. right? So, this one is basically f 3 4. So, this way I have all the uh, partial f statistic, uh, may be I will uh, say again you see this is a known figure 5.03. So, this one is the partial f statistic for the random for the regressor x 2 in the presence of x 1 and x 4 in the model. So, this one is nothing but this one is nothing but f 2 in the presence of 1 and 4 in the model. So, this is uh, I mean we have the all we have all the partial uh, f values. Now, I illustrate the stepwise selection. So, initially there is no regression in the model, then the, uh, the same like you know uh, for the forward selection, uh, we have the value f 1 which is equal to 12.6, f 2 in the presence of nothing which is equal to 21.96, f 3 in the presence of nothing which is equal to 4.40 and f 4 in the presence of nothing which is equal to 22.8. So, this one is the highest uh, and also this is greater than. Okay. So, we do not check uh, any threshold or the tabulate, we do not compare it with the with the tabulated value. So, since uh, the f statistics associated with x 4 is highest. So, x 4 is added to the model. Now, next what we do is that we seek for 
we seek the next best x. So, x 4 is already there in the model. So, which one is the next best that can be added to the model. So, for that what we do is that we, we check the partial f value for x 1 in the presence of x 4 in the model. We par check the partial f value for regressor x 2 in the presence of x 4 in the model f 3 and uh, from this table from this table x4 in the presence of x4 so this one is f1 4 this is f2 4 this is f3 4 okay so f1 4 is equal to 108.22 f2 4 is 0 0.17 and f3 4 is 40.29 so, the highest partial f value is this one and uh, here you know we fix the threshold value we fix the threshold value equal to 5 i know here we we don't want to uh, check the tabulated value every time and since this is greater than 5, since this is greater than the threshold value 5, uh, x 2 sorry x 1 is added to the model. Okay. Now, at this moment we have x 1 and x 4 in the model. So, y is in terms of x 1 and x 4 at this moment. Okay. Now, what we do is that we do not, uh, uh, so this is the difference here. Now, in the next step uh, we check for a possible exit. Okay. So, we have x 1 and x 4 in the model. Uh, so, the model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 sorry beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon. And now, what we do is that see uh, of course, x 1 is significant in the presence of x 4 uh, because the f value is f 1 4 we compute this to partial value f 1 4 which is equal to 108.22. Uh, and the other one also we check like f 4 in the presence of 1 which is equal to 159.03. See this is the last uh, added regressor. So, of course, this is you know this one is significant in the presence of x 4 that is why it has been included uh, I mean in the previous step. Now, the question is whether x 4 is significant in the presence of x 1 that we need to check. And here you see that x the partial f value associated with x 4 in the presence of x 1 is also uh, it is a uh, is it, it seems to be significant because because yeah, it, this is significant because this is greater than the threshold value 5. Okay. So, we do not drop any regressor from this model. So, the next step is that you know we seek for for the next best 
regressor x. So, I have x 1 and x 4 in the model and uh, both x 1 is significant in the presence of x 4 and also x 4 is significant in the presence of x 1. Now, we check the partial f statistics value whether 2 can be included in this model. So, f 2 1 4 and we also check f 3 1 4. Okay. So, here is my table. So, 1 4 is already there in the model. So, f 2 1 4 is f 2 1 4 is 5.03 and f 3 1 4 is 4.24 and this one is the uh, highest partial value and also this one is greater than the threshold value 5. So, x 2 is added to the model. Now, I have uh, the model with uh, in my model we have three uh, regressors y equal to f in terms of x 1, x 2, x 4. Now, we need to check you know uh, x uh, uh, whether the newly uh, inserted of course, f we compute the partial f value f 2 1 4 we compute f 1, 2, 4, we compute f 4, 1, 2. So, this is to check you know one this one is 5.03, this one is 154.01 and this one is equal to 1.84 that you can check from this table right. You can check from this table. Uh, and now, see before x 4 was significant, now in the presence of even in the presence of x 1, x 4 was significant that is what we proved uh, in the last uh, uh, slide. Uh, you know see in the presence of x 1, x 4 was significant. Now, in the presence of x 1 and x 2, x 4 is not significant this is less than 5 but in the presence of these two random variable x 1 is significant, in the presence of these two uh, regressors x 2 is significant. So, these two will be there in the model, but we need to uh, remove we must remove x 4 from the model. So, the model is y equal to f in terms of x 1 x 2 and again we you know uh, we check whether any uh, candidate can be included. We seek uh, for new candidate. Okay. So, for that we compute f 3 1 2 and we compute f 4 1 2 these values are 1.83 and this is equal to 1.86 you can check from my table and uh, both are less than 5. So, we cannot include any more regressor in the existing model which involves x 1 and x 2. Now, we need to check that whether x 1 is significant in the presence of x 2 I mean we, we, we look for possible exit. Okay. So, for that uh, you know we check for possible exit. So, we check for uh, uh, f 1, we check f 1 given 2 and uh, f 2 given 1. Uh, this one is equal to 146.52 and this one is equal to 208.58 and both are greater than 5. So, uh, you know we cannot remove any more regressor from the model and also this says that 
uh, you cannot include any more regressor to the model. So, the stepwise uh, uh, selection terminates and uh, yields the model y equal to f in terms of x 1 and x 2. So, this is the result of uh, stepwise selection. Now, just I want to mention that you know uh, different algorithm uh, I mean the result of the different uh, selection algorithms are different. Uh, you know if you can recall the backward elimination the result was uh, x 1 x 2 final final model was involving x 1 x x 2. Now, the forward selection forward selection uh, finally selected regressors are x 1 and x 4 and for this uh, stepwise selection the final output is x 1 and x 2. So, that is you know the result uh, are uh, not unique that is what uh, I want to say and that is uh, all about you know uh, the model selection. Thank you very much.